It's time for the Wealthy Readers Club right here on Wealthy Kids Radio. Now here's a word from our sponsor. Hi, it's Rascally Randy the Raccoon asking you to donate to our program. Wealthy Readers Club gives free books, commodities, and prizes to our readers from sponsors like you and from the WealthyKids.org program. Go to our WealthyKids.org Facebook page. Push the donate button and sponsor a kid today. Now, back to our show. Keep the revenue in your house. Then Inland, Inland Empire. Today we will be reading, just like Rube Goldberg, the incredible true story of the man behind the machines written by Sarah Anson, illustrated by Robert Newbecker. Just like Rube Goldberg, The Incredible True Story of the Man Behind the Machines, written by Sarah Aronson, illustrated by Robert Newbecker. Question. How do you become a successful, award-winning artist and famous inventor without ever inventing anything at all? This is not a trick question. A man named Rube Goldberg did it. In a funny way, his life was just like one of his famous inventions, an improbable and inefficient chain reaction that ends up making perfect sense. From the time he was a boy, Rube Goldberg loved to draw. We are not just talking about simple stuff here. As early as four years old, Rube traced the cartoons he found in his books. At seven, he took official art classes from a sign painter. Rube might have been a quiet boy. He might have been shy. But he was determined to be a great cartoonist for a big-time newspaper. Unfortunately, when he told his family, they were absolutely horrified. Beyond dismayed, Rube's father, Max, had emigrated from Germany to America to give his family a chance for a better life. He didn't want his son to end up a beggar on the streets. So, to please his father, Max went to the University of California, Berkeley, studied engineering, and after graduation, got a job with the city of San Francisco Department of Water and Sewers. It was a good job. It paid well. That could have been the end of the story. Right? Wrong. Rube detested shoveling tunnels in mines 2,000 feet underground. He didn't enjoy mapping sewer pipes either, and he wasn't very impressed with the city's government. Rube still wanted to draw comics for a big-time newspaper. So after six months, he quit engineering and started over. He got a job at the San Francisco Chronicle. For $8 a week, Rube emptied wastebaskets, cleaned floors, and filed photographs in the document morgue. And whenever he had the chance, Rube drew and drew and drew. Save the date. On April 6th, from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. at the Southern California's largest celebration of science, creativity, invention, and fun is back for one day only. All ages are invited to attend this free event with hands on activities, galleries, amazing entertainment, food trucks, and main stage appearances by STEM. Luminaries. For the second straight year, City of STEM, Los Angeles. Biggest festival of science, technology, engineering, and math, and the Los Angeles Maker Fair. The region's largest gathering of creative thinkers and doers will be taking place at the same time in India. The same place for one huge all-day extravaganza. Experience hundreds of exhibits highlighting organizations and innovators, including expert panel, discussions, workshops, and main stage entertainment featuring surprise science tips, special guests, live, music, and exciting science demonstrations presented by the Columbia Memorial Space Center and the Los Angeles Public Library, reflecting the diversity of the L.I. region and promoting access to all the event. will also include content in Spanish. The event is sponsored by the Columbia Memorial Space Center and the Los Angeles Public Library. Save the date, the City of STEM Festival and Los Angeles Maker Fair. On Saturday, April 6, 9, 8, M to 6 p.m. at the Los Angeles State Historic Park, 1,245 N Springs, Los Angeles, C and 90,012, COST free. Wealthy kids will be participating once again. It was a great opportunity. I am looking forward to new teams this year. Wealthy kids will be participating in the Los Angeles Makers Fair once again this year with the introduction to art design by AII, with wealthy kids and teens tech lessons powered by Connected Nation and the TNT. This is your host, Shauna AI. 
Created by Wealthy Kids founder Shauna D. Ramos, powered by Jenny AI. We hope to see you there. Day after day, Rube submitted his cartoons to the editor. Night after night, the editor mostly said no. When he said yes, Rube sometimes got paid, but other times he just got out of the office tasks he didn't like to do. After a year, Rube convinced the sports department of the San Francisco Bulletin to hire him, and after that, he was a little more successful. He developed his style. The paper ran his cartoons. A column, too. This might have been the next end of story, but then the ground shook, literally. The 1906 earthquake in San Francisco crumbled the city and left many people without jobs and homes. In the wake of the disaster, it can be hard for people to focus on their dreams. It can be even harder to feel hopeful. But Rube didn't give up on his dream. Instead, he did the only thing he could do. He drew comics to cheer people up. And then he made a big decision. In 1906, there was only one place where a guy like Rube could really make it big. It was the place he called the Front Row, the cartoon capital of the country, New York City. So he got on a train and headed east. He didn't have much $200 and a diamond ring. The ring was a gift from his father, just in case Rube needed to sell it to buy a ticket back home. After 12 days of pounding the pavement, lugging his art from newspaper to newspaper, Rube did it. He got a job as a cartoonist at a big-time paper, the New York Evening Mail. He had made it. Right off the bat, Rube became a celebrity. Readers couldn't wait to see what he had to say about all kinds of things. Like sports and politics and the silliness of everyday life. But maybe more than anything else, everyone loved reading about Rube's alter ego, Professor Lucifer Gorgonzola Butts. The eccentric professor invented one intricate machine after another. And none of them were straightforward. In fact, they were the opposite of straightforward and often disregarded the laws of physics. Although this was the age when new machines were being invented to make life easier, Rube's screwball contraptions purposefully solved problems in the most surreal and ridiculous ways. Things like, how do you put holes in donuts? Or, how do you turn off a light? Or even, how do you cut your own hair? Just like the machines he studied in engineering school. These complicated contraptions required lots and lots of parts, and they always worked on paper, of course. They weren't practical in the real world, but that was never the point. Rube Goldberg didn't draw machines that solved real-world problems. He drew comics to make us look closer, and question logic, and tickle the imagination. And because of that, these machines accomplished something astounding and even more important than any pile of nuts and bolts ever could. They challenged people to use the amazing machines in the universe, the brain. So let's take it from the top. Rube Goldberg became stubborn, smart, serious about being funny engineer, office boy, cartoonist, commentator, comic genius, and award-winning artist and inventor whose name is now an adjective in the actual dictionary without inventing a thing. Is this kind of a thing possible? You bet it is. Figure out what you want. Work as hard as you can. And most of all, have a great time getting there, just like Rube Goldberg. Oh, that was great! Now that's the end of our show. Stay tuned for the next Monday Reader segment and learn about children's finance Happy literacy day. through the reading of books. I hope to see you there. This is Rascally Randy the Raccoon signing off. Happy trails! Again. Happy trails to you. Keep smiling until then. Who cares about the clouds if we're together? Just say it's all.